Sai Ram and welcome to episode 3 of season 1 Chai with Sai. Today we have a very interesting topic of discussion that we are about to speak to our guest. I'm sure all of you are wondering what the topic for today is. But before we get to the topic itself, our guest today are a very interesting set of two brothers who are very prominent in the center. and uh, you know these people have been a real inspiration to me and uh, many other youths and uh, teens alike you know so um, without further ado let me uh, introduce our esteemed guests for today uh, brother mohan ram and brother ilango welcome to the show thank you sairam Sai Sai thank you sairam so uh, before we get started right uh, so maybe we should start with the most difficult question of all uh, so begin the show so uh, the most difficult question of all Brother Mohan Ram, can you introduce yourself and say a few interesting things about yourself? Sai Ram, um, yeah, this is probably <laughs> the most difficult question. But if I were to introduce myself, I would say I'm a father of two uh, girls. Um, I've been in the Sai fold for about 20 years now. Many people don't believe me when I tell them this, but I do like cars. Uh, but maybe I didn't have time to spend the money <laughs> or resources in that. and apart from that i love reading and the other thing i like to uh, look at is uh, you know like this kind of uh, mind puzzles where you have to detangle untangle kind of thing so i love doing that most of the time i fail <laughs> interesting <laughs> interesting i think most of us do uh, so how about you brother sarang um, my uh, i'm elango i'm um, in sai fold for last 15 years um, i'm a father of three right um Uh, my son is like 24 and my youngest is 16 um the uh, interesting thing basically i you know blend into nature most of the things that i do um i also like farming i didn't get the chance to to really go into farming started something and then it wind down for some reason and planning to do that probably the my retirement thing mm yeah interesting so two different guests with two very different interests but i think uh, the topic today really brings them together i feel so i'm sure all of you are wondering what the topic for today is <laughs> i think when brother mohan ram gave his introduction i think he gave a bit of a hint la what the topic for today is <laughs> oops so uh, yeah without further ado let me introduce the topic for today which is life is a puzzle solve it so this quotation is very famous i think all of us have heard of it life is a puzzle solve it but how does life compare to a puzzle which components of a puzzle we can uh, you know uh, constitute to uh, uh, our life right so in today's uh, discussion we'll be looking at the various aspects of a puzzle and how it connects to our daily life right so we spoke about life is a puzzle right so how could we uh, you know start how what a better way to start the show rather than you know actually playing a puzzle so i have a very interesting puzzle for our guest here um so the challenge is you need to solve this puzzle as quickly as possible it's a very simple puzzle it's a 16 piece puzzle so let's see how long it takes for you to solve it so mean? both of you can try it together together yes okay strategy is always start with the corner right yeah, so. yeah okay <laughs> interesting a lot of interesting strategies are coming in okay so basically for the audience i just explain uh, what they are doing right what happened No, no. Can, can you? Man. Yeah. Okay. Add coming in. Okay. Okay. For the audience at home, right? So, uh, basically, what they're trying is they're trying to solve all the corners of the puzzle first. So they are almost done with the right-hand side. uh you know uh, puzzle pieces all the corners at the right hand side now they are attempting the bottom it feels like i'm reviewing some match <laughs> <laughs> that's right i feel under pressure <laughs> under pressure yeah <laughs> okay as quickly as possible is objective of the game uh, you, yeah thankfully you didn't set a time limit <laughs> hmm Regarding yeah almost done almost now right done. in the middle yeah yeah the middle pieces i see some tomato i think tomato eh? last piece sunflower okay <laughs> they are done yeah <laughs> right so we are just show quickly 
Okay, basically it's a picture of a sunflower, right? So they uh, success they successfully completed the puzzle. <laughs> for those who probably can see. Okay, right. Interesting. Related to Brother Ilango's farming. Ah, ah. Yeah, probably that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato and sunflower. That's right. Okay, so uh, moving on, right? So uh, one of the first steps that we attempt to do when we are trying to solve a puzzle, right? The first step. What do you think the first step is? I think the first step is uh, like like I think earlier what we did like do something we are familiar mm. like like I told him start with the corners mm-hmm. I think normally we do that because we know that one must be there so we always start with the corners because we know like for sure that one will be there so uh. we always start with things we are familiar mm. that's what I feel mm-hmm. yeah I agree with that you know you got to you got to start from one side and then you know you got to just keep on expand from there generally fits very well. Hmm. Yeah, actually you see the corners you decide a strategy and then proceed, right? But right. a lot of people actually overlook this very important step that comes prior to that particular step that you mentioned, which is first of all you need to know what image you are solving, right? In the first place, <laughs> right? You need to know the what the how the final image looks like before you even attempt to solve it, right? So, uh this is the first step in solving a puzzle. So, similarly in life also, right? In life also usually we are if you compare life with a puzzle right you are always running towards a certain goal similarly like in the puzzle you know you the end image is your final goal so in life what is the final goal in life do you think in your opinion uncle ilango maybe final goal is always you know if if you are married of course you know your final goal is making sure that your children are already you know um safe and sound basically that's always a final goal right and then you'll think about retirement and the rest right i mean that's basically your final goal i mean unless you are very ambitious right you know your final goal will be a lot on to career right and then you know building something new kind of thing but for me final goal is always children and family that's that's always been my final goal mm-hmm. so whatever i i do whatever i i i plan create is basically what is actually going to going to make them safe and sound right um so one one good example is like you know um my son always wanted to be a pilot right so i mean for many it could be in a wrong decision i was actually um literally say that's not the right thing to do at the point of time because always an impact comes to tourism when when economy goes wrong right and it was proved it just during this period so i told him get a safe landing do something that you can safely land onto something when things goes wrong right then you go and do your piloting go no problem with that i think you know he took the advice and i think he's kind of like pretty happy now i i believe so so got to again <laughs> ask him but he really feels it the way he is <laughs> yeah, yeah interesting so what you're saying is essentially like the end goal is not a it's not one thing that fits all it's not one that no, fits no, all it yeah. no no it that. doesn't it doesn't you know there's nothing that you can't get one thing that fits in everything no it doesn't mm-hmm. you know you, you you can't get that it's every single thing you do it evolves as time change things evolve you know and and people around you also evolve so basically that's how you 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 fit you you got to adjust many things and you know you know always they say uh you know uh, change is always a constant so you always have constant changes are always there so you got to go into it feel into it you know blend into change follow follow the the, the trend basically mm-hmm. yeah interesting thoughts right so we'll come back to that in the later questions uh meanwhile let me put the same question to brother mohan ram what do you think the end of uh, the end goal of life is yeah i think if i knew that probably i would have already worked towards <laughs> it <laughs> but i thought i mean the comment you made about the important step before doing the puzzle is knowing the big picture actually in life that's not true i don't think you will know the end picture as you start so you never know you in, in fact you may think it certain way but then as you like what brother ilango said as you move along the picture will change will you need to adapt so i think there is no such thing as end goal but if i may quote swami the current goal is to be happy where you are right now be happy be happy be happy swami will tell that 
so how to be happy ah that is the big question like what brother elango said for him maybe what makes him happy is keeping the children safe and sound they have a safe and and similarly for me as a father right um so i think uh, be happy yourself and make people around you happy um it's not easy but that is kind of the goal i feel i should strive for um but i also recognize the other thing swami said which is happiness is an interval between two sadness <laughs> so swami will tell this and that so at the same time i say when i'm happy i'm ready to be sad also uh, because that is uh, what the life puzzle is so i don't think there's a end goal i think there's a current goal mm. yeah in my opinion mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so from what both of them said right what i derive from what both of you said is that the end goal keeps on changing according to your age according to circumstances according to a lot of different things right uh, so imagine a puzzle that we are trying to solve right a puzzle we know that this is the final image imagine suddenly somewhere in the middle of the puzzle changes picture how would you know you need to rework again every time you change it changes you need to rework 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 uh, so that i think is puzzle is uh, life is probably the hardest puzzle to solve right in the sense right so interesting discussion we having so far uh, so uh, let me put forward the next question right so uh, next question is like uh, the next step right after we have seen the puzzle pieces right usually when we are playing a physical puzzle right when we put the puzzle down on the floor not all all pieces are facing up right so the next step of solving the puzzle is probably to turn all the puzzle pieces that are facing down to face up so so to see all the available options on the board before you decide you know uh, how you're going to start the puzzle so in life also similarly you always face with a lot of different choices to solve a particular problem or a particular objective you have a lot of different choices to make you can choose to start from the left you can choose just uh, start, choose to start from the bottom any direction you can choose to start from any piece of puzzle you can start to choose from so do you think life gives that choice to you and uh, you know um yeah do you think what are the what are the factors that constitute the best choice that you can make in life maybe i start with uncle ilongo <laughs> <laughs> best choice <laughs> i I don't know there's anything called best choice. <laughs> right. I agree. <laughs> right. There is no best choice, only circumstances, right? You you are in a position to do something, you can decide at that point with the resources that you have in hand, the the knowledge that you have. Right? It's always never been the best choice of uh, doing things. I've never seen that. Uh, in many cases, um sometimes, you know, with the grace of was was God Swami, you know, um things comes falls into places that's what i've seen right um when my first time i was out of malaysia i was in australia first day i was like what am i doing here right i i know i wanted to go and do my studies but then it was like first day evening i'm in a in a hostel don't know anybody people say hi walk away and all kind of <laughs> things you it's like you are you are an alien and i was like just sitting at the at the table and thinking you know what am i doing here kind of thing and you know? i was like tearing and suddenly a person came up say hey you you from malaysia ilango right I said yes i never seen him no connection right and he said i'm i'm sundram i'm working here in a nursing nursing uh, school um i'm from malaysia you know and then he introduces his family is himself and all those and then say i'm i'm my my college is just like you know across yours just come over have a look this is my room number it was like oh. <laughs> you know so always that you know there's nothing is, is you know you you can say this is the best it's just a consensus things happens and of course you you always have a guidance from from god swami you know that you know things will fall in as long as you have faith i mean that's that's how i go through a uh, lot of things in my life mm mm-hmm. interesting thought that that's no actual best choice but you decide based on your circumstances right Correct. Uh, so uh, usually before we make a choice right uncle like uh, you know uh, there are certain things that we take into consideration like you know in your earlier question you mentioned that family is very important to you so do you make the decision based on how the, it's going to impact your family what are the other factors before you make a decision what what do you consider see most most of the time right when when i want to do things i will always see what is current what is next right and then where am i heading to right this, this is always in my mind um sometimes your decision may not suit everyone in the family mm. right but you need to make the decision that you think with the resources information you have 
this is the, the, the best thing that you can do for now. Right? Of course, you will always know this will change. Right? So that, that's been always my, my, my choice. Um, I had a choice when I was 24 right, to return back to Australia. But at the same time, I also had a situation that I need to revise the whole thing. Should I take what I need? Should I stay back and do what I should? It's two different things, right? Mm. So I could have been straight, oh, I want this, man. This is my time. I want to go, right? This is, then I can come back and solve it. It doesn't happen. It will not happen, all right? And then at the same time, I thought, oh, I can do this first, and then I'll go back. It never happened. Right? So, you know, it's once you have taken a choice or you made a choice, you got to evolve from there. See whether anything else happens. Something that you wanted didn't happen, that's fine. Continue here, do things what you can do, change it, right? Which will fit whatever you are needed. That's basically what I did. Mm. So. I think Uncle brought up a very uh, important point, right? Not always in life we should make a decision based on what we want, but at times you know even based on what we actually need at that point of time right even even if it means you know uh, some people might not be happy with us but we decide what best for us right that is probably the best choice to be made okay so same question to mohan and what do you think constitute the best choice and how <laughs> do you make the best choice i i, I mean i completely agree with uh, brother ilango um i think when i think back about certain period of time in my life when i had to make uh, tough choices i think that's when the choice of every day is, doesn't matter. I mean, you want to drink tea or coffee, apple juice or watermelon juice, all this is within our so-called uh, free will, so-called free will. But there are bigger choices like what Brother Ilungo was tra- um, talking about, especially for youths who are like coming up in their studies, going into a career, like uh, what to study, where to work. Uh, so for me, uh, if I look back, um, I studied chemical engineering um, I, I came out with a very good result, uh, at least uh, that's what they told me in my <laughs> CGPA. But when I came out, it was a uh, financial crisis, 97 financial crisis. So I was jobless for eight months, uh, literally didn't get an interview. And I don't know why, uh, but that was the situation. So at that point of time, I made a choice out of desperation that I'll apply whatever job that comes. <laughs> and I think that was a good choice because eventually, I got an interview after eight months and I joined that company and I stayed in that company for 19 years now. But I've done different jobs, right? But actually I I felt I made a choice, but actually I didn't make a choice. Swami presented the situation, the circumstances, which made me surrender to him. Then I think what I thought I was choosing was in line with what he thought is necessary for me. So if I didn't make that choice, Um, I mean, life would be very different now, right? But I had some things which I was very clear about that I wanted to uh, avoid when I was making that career choices. I was like looking at my father. My father was a factory worker. He used to work, you know, from morning um, till night. And then at that point of time, I felt like, okay, I must, you know, bring our family out of the situation like, we don't want to a situation where, as a father, you are not around. So I was very clear, I, I don't want to work in a factory. I mean, I'm not against a factory job because in fact, before I went to my current job, I went to a factory and worked because I had no other choice. Though, so I felt like that was very clear in terms of what I wanted, right? So I told Swami, Swami, I, I don't want that, but if there's no choice, I don't mind. So you, you talk to God, you talk to Swami and you present your case <laughs> and hopefully he agrees. And uh, thankfully, in my opinion, in my situation, he felt that was the appropriate thing, so he agreed. So sometimes when we make choice, we must be very clear about our principles. I think that's what Brother Ilungo also was saying, like what you need to do versus what you want, right? So one of the principle was uh, at that point of time for me was I want to stay with my uh, parents, like I wanted to look for a job around Klang Valley. So I think that was very clear. And the second one was I didn't want to work in a, a manufacturing environment uh, just because I didn't want to go into that shift type of work. Uh, but at the same time, what exact work? I surrendered to Swami. So the best way to make a choice is to surrender and uh, mm. proceed with courage and faith. I think uh, Brother Elungo also meant the faith must be there. Okay, Swami will show the way, the right way. 
so i don't think you can make a best choice but you can learn how to the best way to make a choice that will help you mm. even if it is wrong it's okay because then you'll learn and you'll come back and uh, you know relearn i think Hmm. So yeah. even in the worst case scenario, it is still the best choice because out of that you get some learning out of it, and you know to make the next choice better. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, I made some. In 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 hindsight, I feel it's bad choices. Like, I decided to go work for six months <laughs> in the US by myself uh, because of my career uh, needs. At that point of time, I was really uh, upset with myself. I was like, after it was winter, so you can't really <laughs> do much outside. It was cold winter. Looking out of the window, it was dark, gloomy, sometimes white. And I was like, why am I doing this to myself? That's number one. Second, why am I doing this to my family? Uh, at that point of time, that experience taught me whatever I do next, it must be together with the family. I I should not leave my family behind, work far away. uh at that point of time that choice in hindsight i will say it's a, not a good choice uh but uh, i learned from that choice uh tough way it was very tough i was almost going to be depressed in terms of working that day and night without uh, any support system and all that so uh when brother elango said like you make the choice based on the best circumstances you do but sometimes you realize oh i i didn't think about this uh, impact so So yeah that was one uh, experience when I go back and look at perhaps I shouldn't have done that. and that was just before the pandemic mm. uh and I think I told this story many times uh, to my family and friends I came back to Malaysia a couple of days before the lockdown so thankfully Swami was gracious enough to let me come back <laughs> before the lockdown uh but imagine what would have happened if I wasn't on time right so so that was a g- really good lesson mm yeah interesting thoughts I th- I think Mohan and I brought up a very interesting point that you know you can plan your you can decide your choices you know plan your choices based on a lot of different uh, aspects and different circumstances and different parameters per se to determine what's the best choice but at the end of the day the best choice is whatever the swami decides for you right so speaking about that right i just wanted to share a quick story actually uh, i think most of you will know that uh, professor abdul kalam mm. was a very ardent devotee of uh, swami so even uh, you know uh, when when uh, professor abdul kalam you know when he first got his job right uh, first his first career first job right the first uh, one month first salary that he draw he actually gave it to swami via letter you know that those days they have this te- uh, what a telegram i think uh, they it's called so you know uh, they they sent he sent the telegram to swami he said uh, swami if my mother was around my first salary i would have given it to my mother but since my mother is not around i'm giving it to you so that much of devotion and you know uh, love so uh, professor abdul kalam had for swami right and uh, you know when you look at professor abdul kalam's life you know he he was sharing this uh, experience uh, so he he said right initially in, in when he was you know studying and all he wanted always wanted to be a fighter pilot mm. so similar to the story <laughs> uncle was sharing that son always wanted to be a pilot right so uh, you know uh, he wanted to be a pilot so being a fighter pilot is not a easy task you know it's like you know a lot of uh, thousands of people will apply and out of that only a handful will get selected right So uh, what happened was, you know, he wanted to be a fighter pilot, but he he was very smart. He was very smart education-wise, you know, all the uh, knowledge-wise, he was, you know, at the top of the rank, right? But then physical-wise, you know, he was, you know, a bit uh, slacking here and there. You know, he was uh, not so uh, up to the par, up to the standards that the, you know, uh, Air Force was looking for. So he came in. They were selecting twelve fighter pilots uh, that particular batch, and he came in thirteenth. so he was not selected so he was really disappointed you know uh, why why not why did i get not selected and all that uh, of course he was you know just like any of us right we don't get the job of our dream like you know you feel like they very in, in despair and all these things he was like that for some time but then he decided you know he thought for to himself that uh, okay fine you know i'm not a fighter pilot i couldn't be what i wanted to be but now mind maybe god has a better plan for him for me you know that was his thought at that point of time so what he did he uh, he let go of that idea of becoming fighter pilot and he went to study atomic physics so he went on to study atomic physics physics and later in his life right slowly he progressed in the career ladder and he became uh, the scientific advisor to the defense ministry so that was <coughs> the first step he became a uh, sec- uh, defense uh, he became an advisor to the defense ministry scientific advisor so from there right when he came back to perthi one day he was uh, during that time he was the uh, he was playing that role and when he was in perthi uh, swami called uh, apj abdul kalam for an interview and he said uh, you know uh, more responsibilities is going to come to you greater responsibility is going to come to you and professor abdul kalam was thinking you know why is swami saying this to me 
Uh, and then he went back to his, uh, you know, Swami used to give certain people, you know, some rooms to stay nearby and all that during those days. So he was, went back to the room and all that. Then uh, one boy who, you know, usually you have this uh, boys with Swami, uh, you know, doing the running around errands for Swami and all mm-hmm. these things. So he came bringing, uh, you know, some gift from Swami. So when uh, Professor Abdul Kalam received the gift, he was saying like, you know, uh, you know, uh, Swami told me, uh, Swami told me this. Can you help me decipher what Swami meant by this? So the boy was in a shock, a total shock. <laughs> How am I supposed to de- decipher what <laughs> Swami <laughs> meant by this? So he said, uh, of course, you no. Know, Abdul Kalam is asking. So he said, yeah, uh, okay, sir, I'll, I'll try my best, but I, I don't, I'm not sure whether I can really help you in this mm-hmm. situation. Uh, so he said, you know, Swami said this. Uh, Swami said, you know, he has a greater responsibility for me, but I don't know what responsibility is he, is he talking about. Then, uh, you know, with that, uh, of course, the student wasn't able to help. So he came back to Swami. Came back to Swami and then said, uh, you know, uh, he was explaining, you know, Sw- Swami, uh, Professor Abdul Kalam really liked the gift and all these things. But then this boy had a, 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 a certain look on his face that he was like, totally bewildered and confused, you know. And Swami asking, why are you looking this way? You know, what happened, what happened, what happened? Swami was crying. Then uh, this boy explained, you know, uh, uh, you know, Professor Abdul Kalam was saying, uh, you said, you know, uh, I have a greater responsibility for you. There's uh, something greater coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, so w- w- what is it, Swami? You know, he, he was confused. I also wasn't able to explain. <laughs> then uh, Swami whispered uh, in the boy's ears. Uh, he said, uh, he's going to become the president of India. <laughs> so <laughs> even many years before he became the president of India, he was, you know, uh, Swami saw this thing, a uh, greater vision, a uh, greater master plan, right? right? So he saw the end goal, what it looks like. Even when we, as human beings, you know, our plan keep on changing. We make choices day to day and all these things, right? So mean you say, right? Initially, if he be- would have become a fighter pilot, he would just be a, a member of the armed forces. But the president of India is basically the chief commander of all the three wings of the army, right? He's the he's the most uh, what highest position that anybody can hold in uh, in in the democracy, right? So. You know, they, these are the things that in life, right, when we thought that probably it's the best choice for us, it's not necessarily uh, a truly best choice in that situation, right? Uh, so, meaning to say, right, so uh, coming back to the question, right, from what Swami uh, was, Swami's interaction with uh, Professor Abdul Kalam is, right, do you feel in life we truly have a choice or is it a mere illusion that, you know, everything is predetermined, there's a higher goal to everything? Do you think the choices we make in life at that point of time really matter or not? It's a very deep question, so maybe I'll start with Mohan this time. <laughs> no, I remember uh, reading about uh, this analogy, um, and I think it's from Swami's literature, which is basically like a cow tied to a pole. There's a, there's a rope which ties the cow to the pole. And there's a length of the rope. The length of the rope is the op- option that you have to choose, like how far you can go and all that. And at a certain point of time, you reach the maximum. Beyond that, you don't have a choice. So I think life is like that. Within that cer- certain circle of control, you, have, you can make certain choices, right? Certain choices. But beyond that, you can't make those choices. Those choices may be made for you or a consequence of the smaller choices that you make. So I think the question of uh, choice and free will, it's a very interesting topic. Uh, it depends on where we are. Like uh, when we are born as a baby, right? Uh, we, we are not making any choices, right? Everything is done for us, etc., etc. Are we complaining? No, we are not complaining. We are happy. We are happy as it is, right? So at a certain point of time in life, something develops. Probably we call that ego. At that point of time, we feel I need to make this choice because I want this, right? So at that point of time, the law of uh, universe which is choice and consequences comes into play meaning if you make this choice this might happen and you have to face that consequence so that's where the rope thing lies right so I don't think it's an illusion but at the end of the day there is a, 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 a choice and consequence account I think in the Hinduism we call it a karmic <laughs> karmic balance right so the most important thing is look at our action thoughts and words right so are you doing action, thoughts and words which are helpful for you and people around you, right? If you keep making that choice every day in your life, I think everything else will be taken care of. So, so, but, so that's why I said you are making a choice, 
but within that choice you have certain limitations so i hope that helps to simplify this very very complex question i don't know whether we have mm. enough time to answer the whole topic what do you think brother yeah exactly <laughs> i mean it's 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 a wide topic mm. but you know um i, I like the the point of the you know a cow tied to the rope and that that's the conference right that's what you have in you the knowledge the resource mm. the information that's what you have beyond that you don't know right so you you can't you can't see whatever beyond that like what you said you know swami had a vision swami had you know a plan for uh, um uh dr kalam right so swami had that obviously he didn't know that you know that's what he's going to be right so so having that right that's that's that the, the circle that he had this is what i know this is what i'm going to be around in this current period that he knows right beyond that that you don't know same thing you know the 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 length of the rope is what you have so you got to use maximize whatever you know within that and then you know it eventually you know the the, the pole will probably go to the next part and then it will go another strength and that that's basically how it goes i i believe that's that's how it works mm, another very interesting analogy i think swami himself gives his analogy is uh, uh you know uh let's say you are supposed to walk a certain distance right to a far away place and you are walking at night there's no light and all that you only carry a, a torch light mm. the torch light can only shine as much as a certain distance that's right all you need to know is how where to put the next step that's all that's all yeah exactly yeah so that's the choice <laughs> that you are making in the limited vision of what Seriously, the path that you can that's see that's what it is mm. so yeah interesting interesting uh, observations i think of yeah, that we have yeah but as you make that choice right that's where i like what i said the consequence of that choice will affect your whole journey mm, mm. like for example if you make choice only based on what i like what i want not thinking about anyone else you may be having temporary happiness but eventually at the end of your kind of journey you will feel lonely because nobody with me i'm not sharing this happiness with anyone you know so even though you can see the next step you're making so so in a way it's kind of saying that yep there is a path for you you can reach that end goal but you have to make the right choice as you make the next step right so it's interesting it's very <laughs> i mean it empowers you at the same time tells you that remember the next step you decide i think swami says this right the the today is the seed you plant for mm. tomorrow's tree right mm. today's tree is yesterday's seed right so what seed you plant today will determine the tree and the fruit that you get later so plant the right seed even if you have planted the wrong seed in the past if you plant good seed today eventually you'll get good fruits and you know good tree i mean that's another beautiful way swami uh, describes that you still have the ability to uh, determine your future outcome but present is the only uh, uh, truth and reality where you can make the change mm. Mm. yeah okay yeah, interesting i think swami spoke about a lot of these things right like you know uh, it's not uh, it's not too late to adjust yep. back to the right path yeah. and all these things yeah. so uh, i think the next question is uh so now we are at the stage where you know we are trying to actually solve the puzzle right so what do you think is the hardest step uh you know to solve the puzzle to to even begin the puzzle uh so the hardest step to begin the puzzle is probably putting the first piece in you know always people say you know the that you can once you started me started to you know solve the puzzle you can solve the puzzle quickly but putting the first piece in to figure out which first piece to put in is probably the hardest step mm. uh, so what is the most uh difficult uh decisions or choices that you had to make in your life so maybe i start with uncle ilan go first uh difficult choices and um and uh the the wanting the two thing you know uh, mm. difficult choices you make based on your need the surrounding right is is how you come with the difficult choices that you know you make um in my case when i wanted to go and study um my father was just a charge man he was not earning much right um when i i decided i want to go i decided no not my father <laughs> so <laughs> so he all he could only say is go altike right that's what he said and i was thinking how can you do this you know and then my 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 sister was studying my brothers both was not working or my my elder brother was working and the other was not and then um i said don't worry this is not much i will find my way fix you go you know you go i'll send you the money 
and and for some reason right he he came and said okay i have already got this money for your first semester um so i just need to do this for first semester and i i you know the thing is um when when i when i shared with him that i want to go right i i gave him everything that you know what is needed how much i need to spend what is the spending looks like you know and then um and then i said you know just give me a fees for studies that as i'll try to manage it and he said don't worry we will fix it for the first six months then we'll see how it is there lucky enough right when i went there as i said so you know sundram was there right and sundram helped me a lot until today he is my up look person that always you know i um, look very high on him and uh, still in in a very good contact with him so so that that's that was a difficult dif- the most difficult choice i made in my life that <clears throat> um having less yet i want to do this you know to to break away from the circle of uh, difficulty in life right and then i go back to the, the the one that i made a choice between going back and staying right so this was the 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 point that i thought like look i cannot go back they have sacrificed a lot it's now my turn to not to repay to show gratitude right mm. so that's where i i stayed continued everything and then like moved on so the basically that 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 was the toughest choice mm. for me and yeah. I, i think toughest choice means it it uh, how do you define a tough choice is basically the risk that comes to with it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. the 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 risk obviously the uh, tough choice that you're making is always has a lot of risk right and then you should be able to handle the risk if you can't handle the risk obviously you know you are running away from it Mm, right so you you got to take whatever comes you know i i will face it i will take it and it's my risk i will manage it mm i think if if it's just your risk it's just you are managing the risk it's fine if it affects other people i think it gives a bigger impact about how difficult yeah. the choice yeah, is yeah but then when sometimes right i mean risk is also overflows mm. right <laughs> you know and never you never it's contain never you. <laughs> you, you cannot contain a risk within you when that involve other people around you right mm. it's it's never the case but you got to you you can minimize the overflowing right you can reduce the overflowing at same time you can help them to manage that overflow risk that you know impacts them mm. so same question to mohan and i think uh, situations where you don't know the consequence of your choice is the toughest like uh, um some people i think the one of the first few things in life you have to make a choice is you know do you want a final life partner get married settle down and all that i think that's a not a difficult choice but that's a very tough situation to be in because you don't know what the future going to be right so i think that's uh, most of the time you're guided by your heart like your heart will felt you you mean i believe in inner voice or inner guidance so So if you if your you know voice tells you okay I think this is the right thing to do so you make that choice and you you move forward but you don't know what's going to happen so I think that's a tough situation I think like in career or in studies is also like that so when I was in uh, secondary school <laughs> I always told my teachers oh I want to be a lecturer <laughs> you know I thought oh that'll be a cool job to take on and you know work on I never became a lecturer obviously Uh, but but then swami gave that opportunity to teach in different ways so that's a tough choice i made because uh, because of the family financial circumstances like the risk that you guys were talking about right i thought okay i better not pursue that career i don't think my my parents can afford whatever cost i get i will go ahead and do it and then i'll start working because i didn't want to uh, spend too much time studying because i felt like i needed to work so i felt that was a tough choice but no regrets because i made it based on uh, the right reasons like love uh, care and i felt it was the right thing to do but it's tough because you have to give up some things but it doesn't but at the same time pursuing something you are passionate about taking all the risk is also a tough choice like um, i think my daughter second daughter says she's an astronaut she wants to be an astronaut now <laughs> and i'm like okay <laughs> uh, but then i want to support her right i don't want her to to not pursue her dream to the point of time until wherever she can maybe she will become an astronaut we'll see uh, 10 years from now but the point here is we should have the courage and make the tough choice to pursue our dream and passion also right because 
at that at and we'll come to a point of time then we make the choice okay i've done my best i think now i'm going to pivot to do something else so the toughest choice uh, is is not about uh, the choice itself it's about uh, letting go mm-hmm. i think that's that's the part where i fell like every time every stage of our life we'll have to at certain point of time we have to let go of certain of our desires our wants uh, our our ambitions or we may not let go and we continue to pursue then we have to let go of other things right so something you will let go at that point that is the toughest choice i don't know whether that helps mm. but that's what i feel yeah, yeah I, th- i think i relate to that that uh, input that more and i was giving right so uh, i think even my like my life also right i notice like until a certain point of time in my life and maybe until like spm ish i think so it, whatever decision i take right it's like oh, i need to make sure that decision happens properly even i think in some cases now also i do that but you know i need to make sure that decision happen properly the choices are correct everything must be right everything must fall in place everything must be successful whatever you touch but then you realize right when you have that mentality in going into like making a choice you realize that you are faced with a lot of uh, you know disappointment a lot of like uh, you know you really heartbroken like when something doesn't turn out <laughs> the way you want it but i think you if you really do your best like what mohan was saying you really do your best uh, based on whatever available options to you you make the right choice at the moment what you think is right based on your values based on your uh, what are the what are the morals that you carry and all these things i think and then you surrender the uh, the 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 final final uh, what you call this fruit to swami right i think then you realize that okay maybe swami wants you know swami this is maybe swami thinks this is the best thing for me right now and we realize right as time goes by maybe 5 years 10 years down the line you realize that you know oh yeah this actually turned out to be a you know, very good choice for me even in my life also i can just share uh, so uh, there there was one experience where uh, you know I, i was i was about to apply for university right through the course i always wanted to do uh, something related in biotechnology and all these things i was really passionate about biotechnology and my results were also supporting that so uh, then i don't know why until now I, until now i couldn't figure out why i took this decision basically when i wanted to fill in the form right i put my first option as computer science i also don't know why i put it as computer <laughs> science <laughs> and now uh, looking back at it you know i, I don't regret my decision uh, i don't regret what had happened probably it's not my decision in a way that because i also don't know why i made the decision but you know it turned out to be the best choice that i could make i think it's just swami guiding holding my hand guiding through certain parts of my life so i think i, I really relate to what mohan and i was saying right? yeah mm. i think the just building on there right the it's not a tough choice but you may feel it tough is never let go of swami in every stage of your life uh we get so distracted right so for me i i worked uh, overseas uh, like uh, 10 12 years um i would uh, i made the choice not to uh, be disconnected from uh, sai activities and i'm glad i made that choice but it was very tough and some of us will go overseas or will work will have friends from other circles all this will come and pull us pull us but to make the choice to never let go of swami i mean even if you're not involved in sai activities but co- talking to swami every day uh, connecting with him that's not easy that's i feel is a tough choice and you have to make that consciously if not swami will be there watching and you will be drifting away in your in your own uh, ocean <laughs> you know so i think that's important and now as a father i need to make sure my my children are doing that but when i look back at my youth life it was so easy for me to say why i want to bother myself doing extra work extra curric- so called extra curricular activity i could have just you know relax uh, watch movie uh, but i'm glad i made that choice but it was not an easy choice that is a very uh, tough choice in a way that you may forget that you shouldn't let go i feel Mm-hmm. and i think while both of you are sharing another interesting point a common point that i think both of you brought up is like to always have that particular uh, so called uh, uh, you know people when people are climbing rocks right uh, you always have uh, uh, somebody holding the safety rope you always climb with the yeah. safety on that you know that even if you sleep also you won't fall right you can still you mm. know somebody is there to hold you so what do you place that anchor on Mm. So I think Mohan and I were saying, you know, Swami and uh, Uncle were saying, someone, you know, a, a person who really turned, turned in the, turned up in the hardest time to help right. you and all these things, right? Mm. So I think this is a very important thing that we should have in life, lah. Huh? So anything? Yeah, like uh, yeah. I mean, having having said that, right? I mean, always that, and you know, I I believe this that you know you should always look for a mentor. Mm. Right? Mm. Mentor is very very important. let it be you know whatever that you're doing you know it, it can be spiritual it can be career you know it can be relationship 
mentoring somebody should you should look up to somebody to to pull you all the way through mm. because you know you you will have somebody to look over your shoulder because you you can't see what's over your shoulder normally somebody else will see and tell hey you know why don't you do this you know this is something is opening you know and and that's where swami guides you so you know you, you should always have that i mean i i, I believe you know you should always look for a mentor it doesn't matter where you are what you're doing mm. it really helps it mm -hmm. really helps you to progress very fast mm -hmm. and i think being in the sai fraternity is like one of the best resource for yeah, <laughs> the right value mm -hmm. right system Correct. mentors right so swami gives us i mean he is in everyone we see right so i i mean yeah so i really think that if you feel lost talk to someone beside you uh even if you feel like swami is not listening talk to someone beside you i think that will be a good way to help you mm -hmm. help us yeah yeah so uh, i think we uh so like we talking about the puzzle right so now we talk about first piece now only we had the first piece right so <laughs> so, <laughs> so after you put the first piece in the next step is probably like the strategy you were having you solve the corners first right, right? so all the borders first so uh could you just share like uh, so you're solving the borders right so you're connecting all the pieces that around the border right so could you share a bit of details on uh how is your life journey so far like from where you started and from uh, like where are you now do you think like you know uh, yeah well um life journey. life journey i mean you know for me i i grew up in a very small village right it's mining is all i know right uh, my father was working in the mining mm. I come out of the house i see the you know, the huge mine right in front of me that's what i've seen that's where i grow football field land i mean uh, 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 sand hills you know that's that's what you know where i grew right um so basically that that was life then and the most that i could see then is right a, a small town called kampa that's the biggest thing that i see <laughs> in my life okay so i i don't know what's beyond that right and then you know occasionally we will come you know uh, come to kl and 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 you know it's a very small i mean then it was still growing you know my auntie's place and then a week or so so there was no much much vision of where you want to head right so so with that i i there was no much plan so once i finished my spm right and then only i start making choices right before that there was no choices everything would just go with the flow right let it be studies you know I, i was not doing very well anyway but you know um after my spm right sometimes something's really strict uh, strict on my my me saying that you know this is not what you should be doing you should be doing something different right so that's where i start buckle up right and i start buckle up and then i made i made my the plan that i i need to do an engineering i decided that i want to be electrical engineer and then i pursued that and then i become one and then uh, when i came back to do and then i i could not get into the engineering field immediately and i went into uh, health and safety um that was very interesting right um and then once i was doing it and i start you know and as, as i said right, i had a, a family that i really need to you know look at at that point when i came back and then and i had to do uh, start a quick commitment right i had a quick commitments to 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 cover so and then immediately i i get a best offer right but of course you know the the perk comes with it very very low if i have taken that it is life would have been like completely so different but i had said, no 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 I, i i can't do that it was like just you know served you in a silver plate kind of thing you know mm. um you know the person said uh, i can still remember his way he said okay I fix you in this place 2 years you come back you be my partner he is already a civil construction consultant partner so he said once you finish you come back I don't have this expertise you become my partner I was like how can I let it go but I I can't leave my commitment that I already have right and I said no I'm I'm very sorry this is my commitment this is what currently I am at you are giving me something so good but i had to resist you know um so that is also came through sundram right so that that's why i always 
Sundram is always there. <laughs> uh, so, so that's that's the thing that you know um, that I've seen, and then after that only I start seeing things that I wanted to look at. I start having a very far vision that you know I want to be be become like you know do regional roles and all that. I start thinking then itself, right? I, I started to think then. Then I start uh, move my career place to place, right? I mean. For 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 a lot of them, uh, hopping job may not be the best option. Um, I know my father worked in a company for for rest of his life, right? Like Morgan said, he was worked in a 19 years, brother, right? <laughs> in the same company, right? Um, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I I had to make quick changes for so so many different reasons, mm. right? And and it actually brought me where I wanted to be quickly as well, right? With along the same changes, right? I mean, in in some organization you don't have this portfolio coming, mm -hmm. right? But then you got to go and find where the, where that portfolios are so that you can grow, right? Um, and then you know I I decided on that along uh, along the way on those things. And and for me now, where am I compared to where I was? It is a a, a very drastic different right uh, compared to you know where i was in a in a small village with you know and and i still have friends who who still there right um, was not still not doing well i i see them but you know all you can feel is just you can feel for them you can't do much right um but other than that i feel that i am guided i am um probably gifted i would also say that right and I'm very grateful for all these things that has happened to me. And of course, my family who has actually always there with me for every step that I made. So I think it's, it's, it's a, a connection that you have with, with Swami or with the faith that you had, it will always take you very far, right? Mm -hmm. Again, the mentoring comes in, right? It will definitely take you somewhere that you really wanted to go. Yeah, mm -hmm. it will. It will. I mean, that's my experience, right? Um, when I came into into Saiful, my progress was exponential, right? Um, from being, you know, a difficult to easy, right? It it becomes a lot of things becomes easy, right? So, well, that that's basically it. And a lot of things has changed, you know, in in life, and the progress was tremendous. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in, in, in puzzles also, right? When we feel like sometimes, you know, it feels too hard to solve a puzzle. We feel like very stuck in a position and like, you know, nothing, no pieces fit in and you are really confused about what, how to progress further, right? And I think life is also very similar in that sense. Mm. At times, you know, you, you feel very stuck. You feel mm. like, you know, you feel like giving up. You feel like, you know, very disappointed about life itself. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, so at, during this time, right, something like motivation is very important to our life. So what keeps you motivated and you know uh, to keep pushing forward in life to reach greater heights what does that for you Anna? so yeah i think we will face situations where we are like helpless or feel helpless mm. i think um, i was watching uh, this uh, uh, episode in uh, disney <laughs> plus which is loki uh, one of the i don't know whether <laughs> any of you watch but <laughs> I like the episode where they say the glorious purpose, right? Every time Loki comes, they say the glorious purpose. So uh, that reminded me as, as Brother Ilango was uh, answering your other question and to your question now, what is our glorious purpose? What is our meaningful purpose, right? So when you come to a place or situation where you are like, I don't know what to do. You go back mm. to what is your purpose? What mm. is your meaningful purpose? Um, and it could be as simple as my meaningful purpose is to make sure, um, you know, uh, I am being useful to the family, useful to the society, useful to my friends, as simple as that. Or my bigger purpose could be I want to contribute to the society, or whatever it is, right? So if you start with that, I think then you'll realize that you can solve that situation. That's one way of looking at it. The other way is, uh, and I tell this to myself, when I come into a situation where I'm not able to make a choice, I will pause, I will step back. I don't make a choice until a point of time I feel like, okay, I can decide, you know, A or B or C or D, whatever it is, 
or like we talked earlier about mentors right talk to people who may have experienced that situation so this is a very practical level right at a practical level we should do this because then it gives us the confidence uh, the idea the knowledge the information that we need so we talk to people we get more information and uh, like i said the last point is never give up hmm. never give up uh, on swami will guide you but don't be forced to make a choice just because you have to make a choice there is a choice not to make a choice uh mm. you can say that too right so i told people when you're confused don't decide take a step back think through it if you are into prayers pray if you're into meditation meditate you know like divert yourself from that situation so that your mind becomes clear then you come back to that situation and say okay what should i do and then hopefully with uh, god's grace that uh, you'll have a better mindset mm. so for me i think uh, there are many ways to manage this but this is what has worked for me mm. Mm. I, i think you raised a very important point and i like you know often people think that the the only choice available is to make uh, this choice or this choice that's the only option available but they don't think that you know you can actually take a short pause from that from making any choice and you know until you gather the knowledge gather the mm. mindset to make that particular choice right so i think that's a very important point you and must be humble to you must have the humility to admit that i mm. don't know mm, mm, mm. Right? i i have not enough information <laughs> and it's okay to say that right uh, you know not everything is driven by material things yeah. right uh, so so i think having the humility to say yeah i i i i am not able to make a choice right now um but i'm sure swami will guide guide us to make the right choice at the right time mm. so being where you are is a good choice also mm. <laughs> <laughs> very true Uh, so maybe the next question i can put forward to uncle uh, you know like at times you know when you are reaching to the end of solving the puzzle right <laughs> suddenly you realize that eh hey, something is wrong la that no no pieces are missing, missing pieces <laughs> no, not really missing pieces but probably you put a piece in the wrong spot or what you don't realize it especially happens with like very complex puzzles and all so you realize that you know this piece probably doesn't belong here but to if if you remove that piece then you have to rework a significant part of the board So in life also similar right when once you put a wrong step forward it might lead you to many more different wrong choices and then it will come to a point of time where you have to take a look back at your life and say you know this is not where I want to be I need to correct myself and that requires you know rebuilding a huge part of your life back again so is there any uh, decision in your life uncle that you have regretted and what did you do to correct and you know correct yourself to the right path um in term of regrets there are right um there are uh, regrets in life but uh choices that you make at that point mostly could be emotional driven mm. right um so emotional driven uh decisions always brings you a wrong direction mm. right um i've learned that many times mm. so So um so what we basically I I actually um um uh, recovered obviously when you make emotional decisions and you will have a lot of sacrifice you know that that comes along mm. and at that point you got to accept you know the decision that you already made right and then you know the sacrifice that you has to make right and then at some f- point right um emotional decisions that you have made you you can go back you can go back and 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 redo certain things but not everything you can redo certain things right um so basically that that's are the 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 situations that i was in um you know making a wrong decision due to emotion and then um after a period of time you 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 go back and you know you try to fix it and then get things back to to norm mm. and then obviously you won't get the you know it's it's again a glass you know mm. a broken glass you can join it back but it's not going to look the same right but see if if you already have the mindset to fix the broken glass you, you know you already there to fix it that's it right and then you know the rest just leave it to swami leave it to you know whatever happens so then <laughs> then go with the flow again sacrifice you know that the whole thing comes with that right for me always a wrong decision made that's that's a sacrifice you have to take mm, mm, that's that's that, that's how i have mm. gone through yeah. there, there is a culture in japan i forgot what the japanese name for mm. it but you know let's say uh, let's say it's a like glass or what mm. is broken right they used to fix back the glass pieces mm. with uh, gold 
right like gold and enamel and then you mm. fix it to make it you know like even broken things if you try to fix it 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 becomes even more precious than right. what it was yeah. before right so i think that's the attitude that we should take life also with basically yeah, that's right so same uh, same thought uh, na do you have anything to add no i think you can uh, rework <laughs> 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 i wish uh, we can rewind time and uh, i i mean correct some of those and i if i look back uh, i agree i think uh, you know i shouldn't have said that i shouldn't have done this I mean, we have those things but so what we learn from that how we move forward i think that's the that's the most important thing to your point um the other other lesson i learn is uh, never repeat the same mistake twice mm. you made the mistake once you can be forgiven but if you repeat it again that means you're intentionally making that mistake right so now how you know it's a mistake or not that's another question right so you have to find out you have to ask people whether that was a mistake or not so uh, and i like the point basically uh, lingo made about making decision in emo- during mm. during emotional time yeah that's also another time where i will say don't make a decision <laughs> <laughs> seriously <laughs> because uh, yeah so i think uh, that's important i think uh, in terms of uh, the choices we have made uh, so i don't think life is like a puzzle uh. life is like a painting painting uh, sometimes we make a bad bad stroke of paint and then we have to work around it you can't change that stroke but you can mm. like your your you can draw like accidentally you draw a line and then you can make a flower out of it right because you learned so that's one thought that came to my mind as you mentioned mm. not to change your topic of the <laughs> <laughs> of the uh, discussion but but i think that's one way you can't rework it mm, yeah you but you have to accept it. accept your you have to first acknowledge accept try your best not to repeat the same mistakes uh, and then learn from it yeah mm-hmm. yeah so i think brings back to the to the uh, no all of you have shared so many things right so mm. uh, brings to the very important question do you think at this point of time in your life your puzzle is complete or not <laughs> <laughs> start with uncle you'll go with me okay um i don't think so the puzzle will complete <laughs> <laughs> you you will never come to a point uh, you know say the puzzle will complete um but what you can think is or what you can say is you know once you already had a goal right um are you going on the right are you going on the same the path or the direction that you your goal is right that's the only thing you know you will know so like you know you say the whole puzzle i i is is the puzzle are almost there right it you know again right the puzzle will keep changing mm, right mm. doesn't matter at what age at what stage it will keep changing so as more to come are you completing and going forward that's that's you know that's that's what i look at am i completing it am i am i going forward or am i stuck right so there's no way that the puzzle going to be end no it's it'll never <laughs> right so and then i i you know i i can think about the song that kannadasan had yeah. right paadiyallam vaadi varum right payana mudinju vidum you know i you know i i i don't know the the whole song but you know the the thing is that you know what you know all the direction that you go right the puzzle ends when you 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 end then mm. Mm. that's where it is right so the puzzle will never end till the last breath oh, what a way <laughs> to put it right i think yeah the puzzle will never end until your last breath yeah correct mm. you know it's yeah, it's always true. you know i mean there's, there's always every every stage in life right in in, in until the end It, mm. you know there's something to to continuously do mm-hmm. how about you and actually uh, i i mean completely agree with brother elango i don't think there's such thing as completing the puzzle maybe the the completion is when you give your last breath i think <laughs> <laughs> but i was thinking why swami said life is a puzzle solve it but he said solve it and after that you know he didn't just say life is a puzzle so which puzzle to solve mm. uh what is the puzzle mm. i mean uh, i studied engineering as i mentioned so i'm very structured what is the puzzle which puzzle to solve why i need to solve the puzzle all this question came up in my mind as you put the topic so from a from a from a spiritual journey point of view right the puzzle that we are trying to solve in my opinion uh, based on what i have read uh, is who am i what am i doing here what is my purpose can you solve that i mean and that may take a lifetime mm. or few lifetime mm. to solve right i mean if you can solve it in a lifetime great 
<laughs> if not you have to be at least in hinduism context you have to be reborn to solve it again yeah, so, so i think different steps to follow exactly <laughs> yeah yeah so so i think that's the puzzle that swami is referring to mm. now within that universal puzzle that's a small puzzle we are trying to solve like the sunflower and tomato puzzle mm-hmm. that you mm-hmm. gave us mm. as a as a child i have a 6x6 six six puzzle as a student i have a 12x12 puzzle as a teenager i have a 18 by 18 puzzle that puzzle you need to solve also because that is your duty driven your dharma driven as a son as a daughter you know anything so i think the so it's a puzzle within a bigger puzzle mm, mm. you know mm. so in order to solve the bigger puzzle you have to solve the small, small puzzle mm. uh, and that's why it's important to realize it is not either or it's n and it's you know mm. it's n so when you become uh, an adult your puzzle is probably like 1000 pieces you know so and you need to solve that puzzle too so my point here is uh, there is no such thing as end there is probably the end is when you like you st- done certain st- at the material level you may say i've done this dharma i'm going to the next dharma when you look at the universal puzzle i think it's a endless journey mm. probably few lifetimes <laughs> <laughs> we don't know yeah. <laughs> that's okay. why sir life is a puzzle life solve it <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah so uh, in a sense right like for most of the young people around right so i think probably you have you have uh, you are like few steps ahead in solving the puzzle compared to those who are just starting to put in the first piece right so for those who are just starting maybe the uh, studies maybe the mm. career maybe they're trying to you know uh, settle in in family wise and all these things what what do you what advice do you have for them in trying to solve the puzzle Let's start with uncle lengo maybe um again you know i will i will still go back to the mentor right um always look up for somebody who have gone through the path right mm. um seen them have solved it right and then probably they can guide they cannot be the only one who's gonna you know but mentor is not necessarily one person only right mm. can be many right um you know so in that aspect you can always um connect back right mm. you know um talk about the issues talk about things that you can uh, that you you don't have a solution right um there are there will be a lot of situation that you will not have a solution even though you have knowledge but you may not want to make that decision you may not think that the knowledge that you have is enough then always good that you know um you have somebody to to share their view not for them to make decision for you right it is again a mentor should not be making a decision for you a mentor should be telling that you know these are the options that you can look at you know you know then that should be where you will be and end of the day, decision is still yours right even somebody makes a decision and tells you and you follow is the decision that you made to take right so always that you know let it be a, a relationship uh education or you're studying your you know your 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 college or you know career or, you know uh you know um spiritual it's, it's always that you should look at the next person or or a person beyond that that should guide you in and then you know you will be in a safe path that you know you know that you're in the right path mm. yeah. so that that's always helped me mm. I, i think like you know they always say you know if there's a person walking in front of you and you know he fell into a hole and he came out of it and he told you you know there's a hole here don't jump into the hole <laughs> exactly you better learn and move around the hole exactly if you just say no no i want to learn still i want to <laughs> jump in the hole and come out myself is not a right thing to do exactly right. see again you know going back to that right i mean you you don't want to reinvent same yes. thing right mm. you already know that it's already there why you want to do it right do something different just just learn from it and move on to the next one right and it's it's always that you know you will also be a a guide for someone else you will also be a look up to someone else will be you know looking i i probably want to ask him something you know so that's always be there so that's the direction that we should always take um and and you know um be there when somebody needs you on something sharing knowledge right um you know i mean for me whatever i know i normally don't hold back um i mean there's no point i hold back what what am i going to get you know end of the day the knowledge that i have is going to die with me somebody somebody has to get something out of what i know right mm. just just throw it back you know 
if if they pick up it's up to them they don't pick up it's up to them either right it's mm. it's, it's the choice that they make whether they want to learn or they don't want to learn right but if they don't think that you know someone else could be a better person to teach them it's always a wrong thing to think mm-hmm. it's always there's someone better to to tell you or to 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 coach you or to you know advise you there's always there someone else who can do that mm-hmm. you should always look at that point mm-hmm. yeah interesting thoughts angle maybe mohanana what do you think um i think the first thing um to know i think is you are not alone mm. like what brother ilango said right the second thing is i find that it's very easy as a young adult to get sucked into things which will make you forget about everything else it could be anything it could be career it could be gaming mm. it could be substance abuse it could be something else it's very fragile life stage so you really need to have a proper anchor like what you mentioned earlier like never forget your roots uh, thought in your mind so my 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 advice to the young adults and i've you know uh, done group four classes uh, for many many years now is um it's not it's easy to fall into that trap but it's difficult to come out of the trap mm. right so and sometimes the person in already fall fallen into it they may not know that they need to come out mm. so somebody needs to help them to come out so we as we see someone who needs help even they say oh no i'm fine i'm fine we need to reach out and help right i think that's important and the secondly uh yeah never let go of somi <laughs> i i think i keep repeating that uh because when you fall into the trap somi can find you uh, even other people don't find you so my my advice is you're not alone uh, be watch i think that's very important watch your thoughts watch your words watch your you know watch your character and all that um and when you are getting sucked into things which is moving you away from your glorious purpose and then make sure somebody is bringing you back to so always have an anchor it could be your parents it could be your you know uh, it could be your siblings it could be a very good friend someone swami will send swami will send someone to remind you you know hey you are deviating from the path given to you right so to the point sorry about abdul kalam right even swami told abdul kalam you going to be president mm. if abdul kalam didn't believe swami mm-hmm. and abdul kalam didn't put the right effort he wouldn't have become president mm. even if swami told him because he's still working within that choices range of choices they could have made so we have a better purpose we have a purpose that we need to realize but we have to make the right choices don't get sucked into things which will deviate from that purpose and the purpose could be a being a good uh husband good father good wife good daughter good son that that's a big purpose it's not easy mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> right so that's my my advice mm. yeah okay right so i think we have reached the end of the show right so okay. yeah so <laughs> now i think we are almost clear about at least what the puzzle is la at least we haven't started are you sure <laughs> there was a question mark maybe right <laughs> right so uh do you have any uh last words for the audience that you would like to say akar um well my my last word for this show will be mostly you know um always remember you know like brother mohan said right you are not alone right um there's always someone out there who will be able to help you right so always remember that um whatever the circumstances right um that there will be someone there who has the knowledge to to guide you so that that's what you your my my last word always remember there's someone else that can guide you on on things that you need. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, this life is a puzzle solve it uh, I think it comes after life is a game played well or something right. I think it comes after this after, right. Yeah. So that's also important to remember. So it's a game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes you go backward, sometimes you go front if you're playing snake and ladder, sometimes you slide down. But then on the day it's just a game. Right. So don't be um so as as we talk about choices right i mean recently spm results came out even if you got great result or bad result it doesn't determine the end right it's about what you do after this 
like the seed that you plant today will determine the future tree mm. and fruit that you you reap so again that's the point like it it is not it's actually a beginning every day is, is like a new new opportunity for us to make a choice that helps us in the future so my advice is enjoy it like a game right mm. uh, if you can enjoy uh, playing game on your ps uh, playstation or xbox or whatever and you don't mind losing 100 times why are you so worried if you lost in life a few times if you didn't get what you wish for why such a big uh, disappointment and depression etc right so if you take if you could elevate yourself right and see this as as a puzzle or a game then i think uh, you will be the best version of yourself i think you will be you'll give yourself the opportunity to be the best version of yourself because then you're not so attached to the outcome you're just focused on the effort that's what swami wants at the end of the day right which is don't worry about the outcome you do your best no i will take care of the rest so with that i think uh, that's my parting parting uh, words of wisdom i may if i may say <laughs> right, 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 right. so uh, thank you both i think we shared a lot of uh, very interesting points and you know a lot of interesting thoughts uh, throughout the show i hope our audience uh, you know in some way benefited from our discussion for today i hope so uh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> hope so <laughs> right so uh, with that uh, we conclude uh, episode 3 season 1 of chai with sai life is a puzzle solve it So with that uh, till next time uh, this is your host Harvin signing off and uh, yeah so we'll meet in the next episode Sairam 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 mm-hmm.